Our main character, Christopher Senshu, has his spirit taken into the world of Bison Well by a strange swan spirit and is now caught in a battle between a rebellion faction and an empire of some sorts. Somehow, Chris has been given the power of Garzi's wing and as such is treated as the holy warrior by the rebel tribe. It is also discovered that Chris can talk to his real world self through the use of a necklace that the two wear. And now the two Chris's must work together to fight off the enemy and restore orders of Bison Well or some mundane, incoherent bullshit like that. Oh, for all that is holy in the name of heaven and hell, what have I got myself into? This was basically a three episode OVA that Tomino decided to make during the mid 90s which is at a time in which he was depressed due to Bandai buying Sunrise as well as his Gundam franchise. And I guess he attempted to make something lighthearted and wacky to cure his depression and get back on top. And what we get is one of the worst anime ever made. Interestingly enough, this anime takes place in Bison Well, the same setting as Tomino's mecha series from the early 80s known as Aura Battler Dunbine. So it serves as somewhat of a side story or a precursor to that particular series. Although Dunbine is 10 times the anime Garzi's Wing will ever be. The story of Garzi's Wing is inconsistent, confusing, and full of so much random bullshit. You'll never have enough time to keep engaged in it. The story moves so goddamn fast and things just seem to happen out of random, like the bullshit half-assed ending. All of the mundane information is dumped to us on the spot, with no rhyme or reasoning. The first 20 minutes of episode 1? You will get fucking hammered by the end of it for how freaking weird and random it is. You know why the tri rebel tribe is fighting this unknown kingdom? I sure as fuck don't. So yeah, the hell with foreshadowing and subtlety, let's dump all of the BS on the spot for no reason. Oh, and the characters aren't any better. There is little to no effort put into developing any of these characters, and some characters are just introduced at random and easily forgotten, like that one guy in the golden armor. He seems to be a big rival to Chris in the story, and he has a connection to this one tribe priestess woman, but we never see him again after the first two episodes. What about that dude with the red hood that throws those bombs? He seems interesting and he seems to have this relationship with this one blonde girl, but we never see any interactions between them and he's just as easy forgotten. Chris himself is also a poorly inconsistent protagonist who doesn't get developed well and whatever character development is there for him and the rest of the cast feels extremely forced and unnatural. As for the events in the real world, well, you can take them out in the movie and the story won't change that much. It's more or less filler if you ask me. Also, the whole concept of Chris's powers are poorly explained, and not to mention stupid. I mean, seriously? Wings on your damn feet? That's pretty creative, herp dark. So, to conclude this portion of the review, uh, that's how I felt watching the majority of this piece of shit series. It's an incoherent mess that moves too fast, and thus collapses faster than Space Fortress about a coup. As piss poor the story is, the art and animation is at least decent. But none of it matters when you have absolutely no substance to back up your visuals. While it's passable because of how damn fast this OVA moves, the battles themselves also become a rushed, incoherent mess. Thus, they are enjoyable, and because there are no characters that I care about, I don't care about whose lives are at stake. Overall, the visuals are okay, but they don't help the series that much. The background music is bleh, but I did thought the ending theme is okay, so really not much, else, not much else I can really say here. Now we get to what's considered the fun part, or the nail in the coffin. The Japanese version is okay from what I've heard, but nothing remarkable. But that isn't what you want me to discuss. Oh hell no. You want me to know what I thought about the dub. Simply put, it's the worst dub I've ever seen and still holds such a title. Oh yeah, I think it's worse than 4Kids. 
it may start off as one of those so bad it's good dubs by having some unintentionally hilarious voice acting moments, but they are still rather far between, and the rest of the voice acting is irritating, flat, forced, and just god awful. You know how Tomino has this consistent problem of adding excessive dialogue to his works? Well, Guardian's Wing is the worst example of this. Rarely do the characters shut up, and if you watch this dub, you'll probably kill yourself halfway through. What can I say that hasn't already been said about this abomination? I had to push myself into watching the whole fucking thing. Oh yeah, I sat through the whole damn thing. It was so goddamn boring and just a waste of time. But I pushed through just to see if it got any better, and it didn't. So yeah, an hour and a half of my life was flushed down the toilet thanks to this piece of shit. But hey, I did it for all of you out there so I can inform all of you that it is as bad as everyone says it is. It deserves its notorious reputation and will always be awful for the rest of time. What really irks me is that this was made by Tomino. Yoshiyuki Tomino. The man is known for writing great stories. How did he fuck up so badly with Guardians Wing? Depression or not, he at least did a good job with Victory Gun's story despite being depressed back then. So how could he not come up with a great story here? Maybe if this were longer, it would have been better. But really, it's more or less a waste of animation and now forever a joke amongst anime fans. Watch if you dare, but be warned, it will not be pretty. Final score, 1.5 out of 10.